Okay, uh, using lab equipment in organic chemistry is important in being able to synthesize to make um, different organic products and to ensure we get maximum yield and we separate them different products or reactants to make sure we have as pure a product as possible as well as having uh, improved yield. So there are different techniques that you are expected to be familiar with and generally speaking uh, you'll be given uh, a reaction that you may be familiar with and asked to explain uh, either the different pieces of equipment or some of the different react reagents that are being used. Now on this diagram here we've got um, a separating funnel. Now these are all basically the same thing but typically with a separating funnel we're trying to separate uh, two uh, liquids based on uh, solubility. So obviously water will always be polar so you know if you're going to be uh, discussing separation you need to talk about properties. So you're talking about polarity and of course water is polar and many organic chemicals will be nonpolar. So you'll see this distinctive two layers that's being shown in this diagram here where you've got oil and water and there's a stopcock here or a tap and when you turn that, and that's what we're seeing in this diagram over here, you basically release the bottom layer, and that's usually the aqueous layer, so any acid that might be there or um, that might have been added um, will be separated, and you try and remove as much as possible. Okay, and then you're left with the organic layer in top. All right. Obviously, there are some organic chemicals that are uh, polar, just as water, so they would mix. But uh, typically, in many of the experiments you'll be um, asked to describe, um, there'll be nonpolar, or there'll be very large chains, um, and obviously, after four or five carbons, the majority of organic chemicals tend to be uh, insoluble anyway and won't mix. So, um, this is just separating based on polarity. And so, when you're talking about this, there's a few things you should mention. One, about the polarity and uh, if you know the organic chemical is nonpolar, which generally it will will be, that you mention that, and that you also mention that water is polar, therefore you'll see the two layers as we see here, and that we can separate them based on this property. And you should also mention, obviously make reference to the example when discussing this, and thirdly, um, talk about density, which is what this middle one's about. Obviously the more dense liquid, the heavier liquid, and obviously density refers to the number of particles in a given volume, will be on the bottom, and the lighter low density liquid will be on the top. Typically water is more dense than most organic chemicals, so that will generally be on the bottom. So those are the things you discuss when talking about um, separating Okay, so just to reiterate those three points, if you're asked to talk about a separating funnel, obviously we're talking about um, solubility and polarity as I've previously mentioned. Make reference to the example, for instance, uh, making a halo alkane may be something that you did in a uh, lab, and part of that is adding concentrated hydrochloric acid uh, to an alcohol, and we have a reaction, a substitution reaction that takes place. And the aqueous layer, which will include the acid, will be in the bottom layer. And uh, you can also, that also ends up getting neutralized. So you basically end up uh, running off the bottom aqueous layer to try and purify um, uh, the product that you're trying to make and remove the excess um, aqueous chemicals that are present. So that would be one such example. And then you can discuss density and why, uh, and the fact that the bottom layer is more dense. And in this case, it's water, and the top layer would be the haloalkane, which would be less dense. Anyway, that's separating funnel. Now, reflux is a way of trying to increase the rate of reaction. Now, I've got two diagrams here just to make it a little bit prettier, but you should know the names of the equipment, the condenser, and you should know that water generally goes in the bottom and comes out the top and that we have the reaction vessel, the flask at the bottom. Often there are also, um, in the bottom here, we often have um, a, a boiling chip and 
that encourages um, the solution to start boiling. boiling. It acts as a kind of nucleation site and it also stops bumping from happening. You get a sudden big air bubble forming. And reflux is all about trying to increase reaction rate and improve the yield. Often in organic chemistry we don't get a 100% product forming, we get a small percentage. So trying to improve that we do that through reflux. And what happens is as we're heating these reactants in here, I'll use this one over here to describe it with, um, it turns into a gas, goes up here, it then cools down because the condenser has basically like a sleeve that wraps around this tube and it cools the gas so it can fall back in. Now notice there's no kind of um, lid on the top here or stopper because we don't want pressure building up and if it wasn't being cooled obviously the gas would just come straight out but that cooling process means that the gas will get cooled down, drip back in and we can continue on um, trying to react this for a long long time so that improves the rate of reaction and um, so you should be able to describe that. Okay now to sum this up the point in this obviously is to increase the rate of reaction by heating and you're able to do this for an extended period as the kind of volatile organic chemicals that we often use won't be lost as gases so that's important and that we get an improved yield. You should be able to describe this process as well and by that I mean the fact that uh, what actually happens that if it when we do get a gas forming that the condenser is able to cool that gas back into a liquid where it um, returns to the reaction vessel and is able to carry on reacting. So that's reflux. It's an important process in organic chemistry and usually you're going to be given an example to, to uh, describe. One example would be if you were trying to for instance oxidize a alcohol into a carboxylic acid completely you may want to reflux that for an extended period to ensure you get um, maximum yield and um, can heat that for a long time without uh, losing any of the reactants or products that form. Okay. Now distillation is an important process in organic chemistry. We're heating a mixture here which uh, we're trying to react and the one which has got uh, the reactant that turns into a product and hopefully this product is the one we're going to uh, want to separate off based on um, boiling point. The organic chemical which has got the lowest boiling point obviously that means the weakest um, bonds as well will turn into a vapor and come up here and then as it goes through and it'll be going through the middle of this tube here as a gas but then it'll start to turn into a uh, liquid and then it'll eventually form drops coming out here and going into um, the receiving flask. Generally speaking the condenser has the water end at the lower end and that's just in case something happens so this tube doesn't go um, without having any water and so if the water was to get turned off um, it wouldn't siphon it or si run down into the sink. Um, but we'd still have some water in it. So that's kind of important. Uh, it just as a process for doing this. But uh, generally speaking, the main thing you need to understand is that it's a way of removing impurities because obviously if we can separate out um, this mixture in here and we can get the one chemical that we want based on boiling point, so that's where we have the thermometer. We want to make sure we don't heat it too much because obviously we have a very high heat absolutely everything in this vessel would come across and so you're very specific with the temperature that you boil at okay that's important so you select the and the lowest boiling point is the one that will come across the higher boiling points will stay so for instance if you are trying to make an aldehyde by oxidation of a um, alcohol the um, aldehyde would have a lower boiling point than the alcohol so when it got to the temperature for the aldehyde that would start to turn into a gas and come across and you would be basically 
just collecting that on the other side over here and that would be uh, a way of purifying it and ensuring that you got uh, the aldehyde that you wanted okay so you should be able to describe the process is fairly straightforward that as the um, lowest boiling point organic chemical turns into a gas it rises up through um, the um, glassware into here into the uh, actual condenser where it's cooled down and it turns back into a liquid and is received at the other end okay okay now to sum up uh, distillation it separates based on boiling point the lowest boiling point organic chemical will come across first now if that's the one that you want you're able to remove impurities and that's an important point to make as well other impurities will be left behind so you're going to get a pure product hopefully so you want to make sure the temperature doesn't get so high that other organic chemicals will come across as well okay so you'd helpful to have some understanding and knowledge of the boiling points of all the chemicals that could possibly form you should be able to describe this process the fact that uh, the um, chemical the organic molecule chemicals you're involved in maybe it's an aldehyde turns into a gas as it comes across it's uh, cooled down by the condenser with the water going through it turns back into a liquid and then that's collected in the reaction vessel now this can obviously also end up with an improved yield the fact that you are separating the actual um, impurities out will help your yield